Aston Martin has been on a massive surge of performance and that seems to have enhanced even more after the newest upgrade package brought to Canada. However, even though Alonso said that the AMR23 will look two thirds different as the season progresses, one key part of the car will likely not be copied from the prototype they drew inspiration from, the Red Bulls car. Join us as we go through Aston Martin's latest development upgrades and why the Silverstone-based team is not going to copy Red Bull's floor, the most integral part of downforce generation. Before we dive into this matter deeper, you need to understand how the generation of downforce actually happens with 2022's regulations. Around 40% of it comes from the floor, while the rest is generated from other parts of the car, such as the front and rear wings, which is a significantly lesser amount compared to 2021. To top that off, the cars are much heavier now, and it seems like the ground floor effect has made it a bit difficult for the teams to reach the optimum line. Between having a car that is too heavy but doesn't bounce and having a lighter car that effectively bounces on the straights and the high-speed corners due to the imperfections in the aerodynamic concept. Red Bull, for one, didn't struggle with any of this as Verstappen went on to win 15 record-breaking races in last year's campaign. The majority of that goes to the fact that he had a car like no other manufacturer had, the RB18, and he continued on the same, even more dominant path in 2023 with the RB19. The major secret to their success lies beneath the car, and when Perez crashed in Monaco, we were able to get a glimpse of what the floor actually looks like. Compared to the other cars that had their trip to heaven, as James Allison labelled it, the complexity of Red Bull's floor has gone to the extent of other team bosses and engineers saying that photos are not enough for them to copy the design, as they'd need much more complex data in order to understand how all of the ground floor effect works. And ever since Monaco, multiple teams have announced that while it would be mission impossible to go and copy the car from Red Bull, more precisely their floor, Aston Martin made a bold decision to go with their own design of the car, which comes as a bit of a surprise given the fact that they were actually drawing inspiration mostly from the RB18, last year's Red Bull Challenger. Having Dan Fallows, Red Bull's chief executive of aerodynamics, as their head of the development department, and him drawing more than 30 engineers with himself in the Silverstone base squad, you couldn't help but wonder, has Aston Martin found their new, genuine version of the floor that might serve as a base and motivation for the rest of the grid that are already focused on copying the RB19's floor? When talking about this, Dan Fallows said, we have our own philosophies and we have our own ways of approaching things. And really, there's a lot of optimization in things like the floor. The reason that you see the details on the surface is because we'll spend a huge amount of time trying to optimize these surfaces. So it's important for us that we carry on our development path. We think it is providing a rich seam of development. We've seen another update on that in Canada. So it's important for us that we use that going forward. Obviously, Alonso and Stroll both had great race pace, as the two-time world champion finished second in Montreal, beating Hamilton, while Stroll was able to climb from P16 to P10 while being stuck in a DRS train, only for him to be promoted to P9 after Norris penalty. This is the GP that saw the implementation of a variety of changes to the AMR 23's floor as part of a pretty major upgrade package, but it doesn't seem like this is the last race in which the team will bring upgrades to the car. Although Austria is not likely to see Aston Martin add new upgrades, the following race in Silverstone, their home track, will see new modifications on the AMR 23, ones that Dan Fallows has a lot of hope that they have the potential to catch up to the RB19. But at this point, it's almost impossible for any F1 fan to imagine there could be another design on the car's floor and the engineering marvel in general that would differ from Red Bull's, but still deliver top-notch results. This is something that Aston Martin does not believe in, and due to the abundance of aero time that they have after finishing seventh in the Constructors' Championship last year, they're now so motivated to catch up to the team that they're not only drawing inspiration from, but also intellectual property in the form of engineers and ex-chief aerodynamicists.
Furthermore, Fallows went on to talk about the massive impact that the Montreal upgrades had on the AMR23 and how the path would be in the upcoming races. As he added, it's physically a very big update. But in truth, there are things that we've done to the car up to now which are also quite significant. We're trying to put consistent developments on the car rather than wait for a few races and then have a big update. While usually it was the most different, it's not necessarily the biggest in terms of performance, although hopefully it will be a step. When you have Alonso saying that Aston Martin's project is the most confidence-inspiring project that he's ever been part of in his F1 career, you can't help but wonder, where's the limit for Aston Martin? The push for the 33rd win is continuing, and it has been consistently mounted on Mike Crack by Alonso and Lawrence Stroll. And while the team has a loose end in Lance Stroll, one that is seeing the biggest teammates difference in points in the Drivers' Championship, they definitely have the potential to challenge Red Bull more than any other team, apart from Mercedes. Now, the question of whether Aston Martin is doing the right thing by not copying Red Bull's floor is still one that would need some time before it gets answered by the team itself. And the fact that the majority of other teams are already going down the RB19's path is only speaking for itself about how much less confidence they have in trying to invent something new and then risk it by trying it out on the already limited 2023 season. James Allison was one of the first people to speak about copying the design of the RB19's floor, saying that while the chassis of the W14 is too narrow to fit the floor of the Austrian squad's car, they're definitely going to use some elements from it and try to analyse how they can improve the performance of the W14, as the Silver Arrows are preparing yet again to bring another massive upgrade package to Silverstone. This is the race in which we'll see which one of the teams has the upper hand on Red Bull and whether there'll be another race winner this season not named Max Verstappen or Sergio Perez. Talks about Red Bull potentially lifting the foot off the gas for 2023 and already focusing on 2024 due to the penalty that's impending on them later in the season for breaching the budget cap have already started. But that is effectively bad news for the other teams. Why, you may ask yourself. Because if the Austrian squad is now understanding everything they need on the RB19, they're not going to be hit by the penalty as hard as everybody else hoped to. Meaning that breaching the budget cap might not be a bad thing after all. You just pay a couple of million dollars, get a bit less aero time and proceed to be the best team on the grid. I'm not pushing this propaganda, I'm just telling the current outcome of the Formula One sport, one in which we might see a one-man or one-team monotonous, boredom-filled season if the new design on Aston Martin's floor doesn't prove to be as competitive as the one on the RB19. But what gives us a lot of hope is the fact that the Silverstone-based squad has mostly been the second fastest car on the grid. And while their floor is significantly different to the RB19, pointing out the one major difference as to why their performance is not similar, apart from the engine and the mechanical parts that Aston uses from Mercedes, the new design on the floor does have the potential to shake things up and make everything a bit more interesting. With that being said, the upcoming races might see a bit of a drop in performance from Red Bull, mostly thanks to the fact that Aston Martin is here to mix everything up with their latest development upgrades and the newest version of the floor. Do you think that not copying RB19's floor style is a good thing for them? Let us know in the comments below.